So let's take a look at the complex oscillator. We'll start with the default patch. I've already loaded it in, but if you need to find it, it's in the preset browser under template, and you will find the default patch there. All right, so in this default patch, we are listening to the complex oscillator as it goes through gate one, which is controlled by the envelope generator. Let's look at the controls on the complex oscillator. There's a keyboard on off option here. Right now it's on, so the key tracking is engaged for this oscillator which means when I play different notes on the keyboard, the oscillator tracks along. But if it's off, the oscillator will no longer respond to the keyboard. You will want this on most of the time. Next is a quantize on-off switch. This relates to the tuning control. So we have a pitch slider here that sets the root note, which you can see in the bottom left corner. So this slider is giving us quantized musical notes. But if we turn off quantization, now the slider is giving voltage values, which doesn't specifically define musical note subdivisions. You probably would want this on too most of the time. So this slider is the main tuning option for the complex oscillator. But you also get a fine tuned dial here for making more subtle pitch changes. Double click to reset it to default. The polarity switch here relates to the polarity of the modulation signal that comes in the black input below. So you can invert the modulation signal with the polarity switch. This slider controls the depth of modulation, and what you modulate here is the pitch of the complex oscillator. You can also modulate the timbre, and this polarity switch works on that too. Talking about timbre, this side has all the timbre controls. When this dial is at zero, we are hearing the Buchler's sine wave, and we can refold the shape with the timbre slider. This gives us more complex tones with a lot more harmonics. Now if this dial is all the way to the right, we are hearing one of these three waveforms. These are generally a bit louder, so I'm going to reduce the master level. Okay, so now we are hearing the triangle shape. So if the dial is on the left, we hear the sign. It's a bit softer. And the dial all the way to the right, we hear the triangle, because the switch is set to triangle. We can also refold this shape with the timbre slider. The refolding is not as extreme as it's on the sign shape. Let's try the pulse shape with the switch in the middle here. Doesn't really look like a square, but does have that hollow odd harmonics timbre. We can refold this too. Interesting. Then lastly, we have this impulse shape. On the original Buchler easel, this was a sawtooth shape, but on this Arturia one, they've changed that, though it does sound similar. Slightly softer as well. It does sound like it has odd and even harmonics, but doesn't look anything like a sawtooth. Maybe a triangle with some upper even harmonics. The V folding brings out more of that triangular shape. So those are all the timbre options. Now you don't have to choose just one end of the dial here. Setting that to anything in between will give you a mix of the sign and whatever is set on the other end with the switch. You can also modulate the timbre with the signal input here, and the slider above controls the modulation depth. As I mentioned earlier, the polarity switch can be used to invert this timbre modulation as well. Cool. So that's the complex oscillator. Next, let's check out the modulation oscillator.